Hello guys, as you may know, I have recently done a review on the Procyon Sentry. Now, um, I said in that video that I would do an off-road video on the Pro Procyon Sentry. But instead of just doing this car, I decided to compare it to the Land Rover Defender. Which is, uh, I guess you could say it's a competitor of it. I mean, it's both off-road focused, and I guess they would both compare equally. Now, uh, I spec these cars equally. This is the base model, so Procyon, which uh, starts around 73 grand, which is pretty expensive, honestly. This is the, uh, it's actually a mid-trim Defender, because the cost about the same, about 73 grand. Uh, you get this, you get a, you actually get semi-leather seats, and a bit of a nicer interior than the cloth on the Procyon, but we'll see who does better off-road. Now, obviously, this Land Rover, I think, it, it does have a suspension, which we're gonna put it up into off-road mode. So it's about the same height as the uh, Pro as the Centauri. I mean, I think the Centauri is a bit higher, but it shouldn't matter too much. So we're gonna take the Land Rover out first because that's the one that's been out for longer, and then we'll take the uh, Centauri out. Now I'm gonna put these cars into their rock crawling mode because that's what we're doing here in Utah today. We're gonna we're gonna go rock crawling. Now I should mention, this car ha does have the 2 litre inline 4 engine, not 3 litre diesel or the 3 litre petrol engine, so we'll see how it responds to that. So we're going to put in uh, rock crawl, here we go. Right. So, I can, I can just feel this car's going to strip or something. Now let's go into extra review. Now this car does have a pretty low lift, I don't know why, it just does. Uh, I, I doesn't give me much confidence off-road. So yeah, I think this is the Explorers pack, so it does have a few options, which helps with off-road capability. I don't think it actually helps, I think it just gives you the roof rack and the uh, side boxes to store stuff, and yeah. So I'm... Damage the front door. I'm trying to go as slow as I can to make sure I don't damage anything. That did feel good. Alright. Now I should mention, uh, this is not the base model. The base model does not come with a suspension. I was gonna compare it to the I was gonna compare the Centauri to the base model to Defender. Then I realized the price difference is pretty extreme, so then I decided, you know, let's go for a higher trim. So we got the mid, I think it's like an SE trim in living in uh, America. So it's like a mid range trim with a two meter engine. Now it is struggling a bit on these rocks, especially with the engine. I mean, the three meter engine probably would do better, but we don't have that today, so we just can't work on this. Now, uh, I think the Centauri must have a bit of an advantage over here, because it does have a higher suspension, and probably, honestly, it would probably have a bit better uh, off-road capability, because it does have a locking diff and all that, all that off-roading stuff. It just doesn't. It uses Land Rover's uh, full drive system, which uh, I would say is about as good. It's maybe, it's controlled by electronics, so, I don't know. It does have the terrain response system though, which has like 20 different modes which you can choose from. Here comes the big ditch. Now, so how we're gonna tackle this is, we're gonna put a wheel basically in the ditch, on purpose. It, this is pretending like you didn't see it. Oh, so now we're stuck in the ditch. So can we get out? No. Well, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to. But, but can we can we reverse out? No, we can't. I think we're stuck. Right. Okay. So we'll take it out of the ditch. We we'll try that again, just in a slightly different in a slightly different path. So instead, we're gonna go a bit 
uh, to the left and we're just gonna leave a bit of that wheel dangling there. I should be able to do this if not this good stuff. It's stuck on the thing so we're gonna just reverse that. Now this car does have a low range so it might be pretty convenient when you're off-roading. But honestly it's just... it does help but... I wouldn't give it a 10. Because, first of all, it doesn't. You can't lock the diffs manually, so you have to kind of rely on the electronics to get it right. And if they doesn't get it right, then you're gonna have to kind of feather your way through it. Because there's no way you can really control how you lock the diff, it's all electronic. is getting a bit rougher, but this car should work pretty good. No problem. Now the benefit of this car is it does blend in when you're just driving around normally on the road. Uh, so yeah, it, unlike the Centauri, uh, it's, you can adjust the air suspension which means it'll be lower on the ground, so you won't, it won't stand out as much I guess in traffic, it'll just look like a normal vehicle. I should mention there is a nine, there is a Defender 90, which is a short, shorter wheelbase version of this. Uh, but we're not Viva de Weirdo, we don't have that today, so we're just gonna use this one. Okay, so down the bridge we go. Right, so the rest is just easy, so we're just gonna go through this. So that took it fine. I mean, apart from the little ditch, which I wasn't expecting it to take anyway, it's absolutely fine. Right, so now I'm gonna park the car, uh, and then we'll get in the cent Centauri, and we'll get and we'll give that one a go. Right. Okay, we're parked up. Right, do the Centauri. Now, the Land Rover has a 2 litre inline 4 turbocharged engine, which is a petrol. This has a 3.3 litre V6, twin turbo V6, that is a diesel. So it should have the advantage on torque, which the Land Rover kind of lacked. But, uh, it doesn't have as much horsepower, which I don't think we bring really a need on here. Okay, now before we do that, we're gonna put it into trail mode, which is the off road mode of the Centauri. Uh, and I guess it should do pretty well. This car, this car is basically a Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series or a Lexus LX. It's basically those cars combined. Uh, and so it should do pretty well. I mean, Toyota does have a heritage of off-roading and reliability. So I have no reason to think why this car would not pass the test. Now, okay, first of all, we actually have a lot of options here. We can lock the transfer case, we can put it in low range, we can put the, we can lock the diffs. Uh, I don't think we really need any of this, but we're gonna put it on regardless. We're gonna leave it in high range, we don't have to lock the transfer case. We don't have to lock the transfer case. Now, this car doesn't have air suspension, but honestly, it's pretty high off the ground, so you don't really need it. It's not really gonna scrape on anything, unlike the Land Rover. Because in, in normal height, the Land Rover is pretty low. So, I mean, it's fine on the road, but like, when you take it off-road, it's gonna scrape on stuff. Like, it's pretty low, and also the lip is, like, kinda low. So, I wouldn't take it off-roading if you don't have the air suspension raised up. But honestly, on the Centauri, you can just lock the diff and just go. You don't even have to lock the diff half the time. Now this is a pretty basic offer challenge, but honestly, it the defender struggles through here because of the low ground clearance. But honestly, the Centauri is just doing just fine. It 
is having no issues at all. Now you do pay for that, I mean this is just the base model and it's pretty expensive. Uh, and you do get a lot more from the Defender if you're using it mainly as a street car. But, I mean, if you're gonna be off-roading often, I don't see why you wouldn't choose this. It's a lot more reliable and a lot more capable, even in the base model form. Now I should mention that the Defender isn't the base model. The base model starts around 50 grand. Uh, you get, you get all the off-road equipment you get in there. It's just slightly cheaper and it doesn't have air suspension, which is, which kind of defeats the point of it. Anyway, so we're gonna find that ditch that we couldn't get through in the Defender. Here it is, and we're gonna try to drive through it on here. Now, uh, I know it's gonna sink regardless because obviously. Uh, and I think I'm gonna lock the transfer case for this. So we're gonna put one wheel like that. Yep, you are scraping around the front, that's fine. Applying a little bit of throttle. That made it through, no problem. No problem at all. That just shows that the ground clearance on this is exceptional. Because that, because the Defender has ground clearance, but it, it couldn't make it through that. So, what does that tell you? This car has so much ground clearance, it can make it through. Also, the, the lockable uh, transfer gates makes it just a lot better. Now, of course, uh... The Land Rover, as I've proven, does go around the Nürburgring a bit better because um, it has a lot more grip and probably better performance than this. Uh, this isn't built for any kind of performance driving, it just understeers. But that one is actually built for like road use, so yeah, I guess it's fair enough. I mean, you gotta kind of decide which one do you want. Do you want off road or do you want to go? Or do you want a good performing car on the road? I should mention that this car is um, actually considered a luxury SUV, so is the Defender, but I honestly think in the higher trims this thing is a lot more luxurious, because the Defender is kind of, you kind of have to mix the utilitarian with luxury, and it doesn't really work out that well, especially when it's a purposely built utilitarian car. I mean, you get the idea, but like, it's not really that luxurious, you can't really cram that much stuff into it, but this one, mm, it's built as a luxury SUV and it's gonna be one. Anyway, we're basically done. And this thing made it through no problem. The Defender, uh... Yeah, it has some issues, but... It was fine, I guess. So... As I back the car up... My final verdict on... The two cars. Well, um... Yeah, so the Land Rover does offer better value for money, on the road especially, but the Procyon mm, is just better off-road. It just can go do a lot more stuff, and it just doesn't struggle, it just goes for it. Honestly, this thing's amazing. But the Land Rover, uh, it's fine, I guess. For basic off-roading, it's fine. Especially because of this low lip that stretches all the way down here. You're gonna end up scraping this on all the stuff if you do go offering. The century though, lots of ground clearance, no lip, and there's also an under train here, which does help. So yeah, if you're going off-roading, choose a choose a century, no debate about that. But if you're mainly going on road and like sometimes go off-roading, I would choose the defender. So anyway, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you if you enjoyed the video, please like. If you Want to see more of this content? Please subscribe. Anyway guys, I'll see you later. Bye.